is now incompressible Navier-Stokes equations. Um, so you already pre prepared from uh, the Stokes uh, the tutorial that we had before. So now we uh, only change this slightly by adding the time dependent, uh, the time derivative. So we have a time dependent problem now, and also adding the convection part here, uh, which of course is nonlinear because the convection uh, itself is a solution of the, of the Navier-Stokes problem. Okay, um, again, just importing the, the stuff. We again considered the same geometry that we already saw for the Stokes example. So this schäfer turek uh, geometry where you have a cylinder or a circle in the middle and you have some flow around it. Uh, we use the same labels as before, so we have different boundary conditions for the wall uh, at this um, top and bottom. Uh, with a cylinder in the middle, we have inlet left, outlet on the right. Okay, so it sets viscosity to 10 uh, to the minus three. So relatively uh, slow, but still moderate. Uh, we use a Taylor Hood discretization here. So that's also something that we saw before. So we use order three uh, vector H1. So component wise in H1 conforming finite element space of order three uh, for the pressure one order less and we put them together in the product space. Um, okay, so the vector H1 compared to putting the components together individually provides you the convenience that you have a divergence operator and the gradient operator as a matrix valued function. <coughs> okay, I should execute this, of course. Um, okay, so as initial value for the problem, we solved what we saw in the other tutorial already. We just solved the Stokes problem with the proper uh, inflow profile. So this is just a little bit more extensive than what we have seen on the other tutorial, but it's, it's the same uh, result. So let's just do it. So we see if we set the boundary conditions here, uh, we're all accustomed to that right now. So we have a coefficient function um, u in, and we set the a grid function component zero. So that means the vector h1 part of the of the product space. Um, there we set the um, the vector valued function, but only on the uh, boundary part where we have the inlet. Okay, so this is kind of the, 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 the function that fulfills the boundary condition, but nothing else. And okay, so we can also plot the profile. Um, you can imagine that. And now we solve the initial uh, Stokes problem. So yeah, this is again, A matrix is now the Stokes matrix. Yeah, so this is what you have in the integral there. So we later on only have to deal with uh, involving the time derivative and the convection. Uh, so this is kind of missing here. For the right-hand side, yeah, we have an F linear form, which is just empty. So the assemble does nothing but creating an, a zero-valued uh, vector. Um, we can set up the inverse of the Stokes. So this is just needed for the initial values, not later on for the time stepping. OK, so we can execute this, and we get pretty much uh, what we would expect. Um, so. Let's continue. Yeah, now for the time discretization, what we want to do here is um, because we cannot yet deal with nonlinear problems, we will do this, do this in a later on tutorial, we will do a very simple uh, time stepping uh, scheme which treats the implicit, uh, the, the viscosity implicitly. So we have, again, such an M star matrix which consists of the mass matrix and the Stokes part of the bilinear form. And then everything else we put on the right hand side, and that means the convection, so the nonlinear part, is tre treated explicitly. And we just do an implicit order for the implicit part and an explicit order for the explicit part, so just a first order, first order method. Okay, so you can also write this in incremental form. This is what we will do, but so this gives you kind of what, what we want to have. <coughs> okay, so this time, um, kind of alternatively to what we saw before, we assemble the M star matrix directly from the first place, but of course you could also just do the linear combination of the corresponding sparse matrices if you want. Uh, so we set up the corresponding M star matrix from the last slide, and now we um, set up the linear form responsible for the convection part, uh, which you see here. So we have um, the gradient of the velocity uh, times the velocity, so the velocity itself is, that was defined on the previous slide, is the vector at one component of the product space grid function. Uh, so this is something that we can evaluate uh, at every known uh, time step. So this is for the old 
for un for the last time step, we can evaluate this. Uh, so we get a linear form that we can compute by a very uh, simple assembly. Uh, in the next steps, later on, we will see that alternatively to linear form, you could also uh, use a bilinear form and an apply operation. So we'll see what this means uh, later on. Okay. Um, let's just simply do this. So we have the uh, example. So in every time step, we now apply this convection linear form. So this is what you see here. Um, so this gives us this um, C of UU, so the convective part. We have, for the right-hand side, we also need the uh, A times UN. So this is what you get in this residual vector. Um, that we created before, and then it's just applying the, the inverse of the, of the Stokes matrix with a, with a uh, mass term. Okay, yeah, and then you, you could compute this for a longer time to get the very nice Kalman vortex street behind this, this uh, circle. Um, any questions? Okay, so. Uh, that's again a supplementary that I will skip, so you could also uh, think about how to compute drag and lift forces around this circle. Um, and this is kind of explained in a little more detail uh, in, the, in the remainder of this tutorial um, here. Okay.